what I gotta say. Out of every single Nolan movie, this one is by far my favorite in terms of the way it looks. Shot on IMAX, just like how he usually does it. But I just feel like in the grading, they just gave it like some extra love. I read an article where he talked about a, a lot of the movie is in color and then some of it is in black and white. So black and white is supposed to be like everything that's objective is black and white and then everything is that subjective is in color so very very interesting take on that before we jump in i, I want to ask like did you have trouble getting the tickets for this because my wife and i we looked for like 25 minutes before we got lucky and found half decent seats i'm gonna be dying to see the film and guys before we jump in do me a favor smash the like button subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon so you can be notified about future content let's go all right this is hands down my favorite shot in the entire trailer and that's what i wanted to mimic i'm gonna show you what we're working with and we got long ways to go but let's break this down really quick okay so when we look at the colorized waveform we see that there's lots of greens and we can see the ground trees, all of that. So the green is coming from there. And then there is orange that's happening and it's not too pushed. And we can see it in our vector scope. The colors are not, you know, too, too pushed, right? So like they're very close to the center point of the vector scope, which means the saturation is just about right. It's not too pushed. But the one thing that I want you to focus on is how the focus just drops like the focus lives right around here and then after that it just it's so shallow the depth of field is out of control in this shot and usually that's not something that we see a lot in movies like you know there's a healthy amount of depth of field whereas here it's shallow as hell okay so these are the things that we got to keep in mind we're working with this so i've already gone ahead and converted it from red to uh, rec 709 so that's what we got i'm almost thinking about like this guy is the childhood of our main character oppenheimer and he's just kind of looking down at that boy the broken boy right so like he he created the hydrogen bomb and right here uh the boy is just kind of staring at him right and then he's all sad so that's what's really happening here in my head that's the narrative that i'm building okay so another thing that we can see in this shot is that there's a very strong key light that's coming through from here and we can see the shadow around the nose. So that's pretty strong and we don't necessarily have that here. Uh, so we're going to create it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create about five notes total that we're going to be working with. This one, let's call it in. Uh, this one is going to be our out. This one is going to be our primaries, just base. And then we're going to name them as we go on. So the first thing that I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to go under my offset in my HDR palette, which works like your F stops. And I want to drop that down. OK, so I want to pull that down. I'm kind of just like looking at my waveform right here and see where everything is. Maybe like about a stop. Maybe I can pull it up. So what about like three quarters of a stop, like something like that? I don't mind that because I still want to kind of keep the faces in the same world somewhat so what if we bring it to something like that i don't mind that that's okay okay and uh, the next thing that i want to do is now i want to create like a contrast that's going to help us because once we dial in the contrast the saturation in the image and everything is going to sit in and then we can actually start carving like which colors need to go where so it's usually not a bad idea to start there so Let's go in our custom curves or our S curve and I'm gonna pop that open, make it bigger. Let's put that here. Let's bring that down here. What I wanna do is I wanna create a point around my 18% gray. So it's gonna be somewhere around here. I'm gonna just create a point right here. I'm gonna hold shift when I do that so it doesn't really move anything. And now what I wanna do is I want to lift this up just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit like that. I want to take a point and I want to start pulling it in because uh, the contrast that we see here is pretty healthy. And then I'm going to create another point right here and I'm going to start pulling that up. Let's just pull our overall image down because we're going to be creating uh, extra light on his face like this. So we're going to bring up his face anyways. I'm just looking at the entire image and I feel like it's better to drop it by a full stop. And now I'm back in my node where I'm going to adjust my contrast and it's looking a lot closer to now where we need to go. So that that makes it a little bit more gentle on the bottom end. And again, like as much as like we have a pretty healthy amount of contrast, one, it's created through lighting and two, overall, there is still really nice roll off. So I don't want to lose that. OK, 
So I like where I'm sitting uh, with my contrast. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And uh, now what we wanna do is, let's kinda go in and start dropping these colors in. So if I were to look at this shot and we look at our vector scope, you see like how everything is living, majority of it is living in these quadrants. The only teal or cyan that we're getting is the sky, which we don't have in our shot. So we're not gonna worry about that. But our shot lives a lot in the magenta and in the blues. So we have to pull that down and in the reds. Whereas here, seriously, like none of those colors exist, right? So like all the colors right here, right here, right here don't really exist compared to like what we got going on. So we got to pull that out uh, of our image. So I'm going to start off with literally just taking my gain and gamma and, and try to just drive it in this direction, okay? And then I'm going to pop this open, put it next to it and kind of see like what I just did. That's not bad. That's actually not bad. I can take my gamma and like see where I want to go with it. So what if I park it somewhere around here? I'm going to take my lift and I'm going to clean my blacks, right? So I want to kind of pull that down. Keep it somewhere around here. And I'm looking at my image. So it's looking good. I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing so far. But again, I got to cool off my lower mids because we can see it right here. These are pretty cooled off, right? So I want to I want to have that like look at right here. So I want to have those in and I feel like I'm kind of getting those. So now we're really getting into that cinematic realm and I'm liking it. So I'm going to come back and adjust this. If I have to, I'm going to call it look uh, for now. And then the next one is going to be our window. And then a lot of the texture and this sort of vibe is going to come in from the window node because you see like how everything drops, like the exposure, right? Like look at our image to where the guy is because there's an actual light on him and then everything else is all the way down here. That's not the case here, okay? Everything around our guy is pretty lifted. Our guy is down here, it's almost like inverted. So this is the skin tones in Oppenheimer, everything else is dropped. In our case, this is the skin tone and then this is everything, right? So we kind of have to reverse it. So we have to go pretty aggressive with that. So I'm gonna create a shape like this and let's go, go ahead and make it really, really tiny. Okay, I'm gonna make it pretty small. I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here. I mean, my focus is literally his eyes and uh, part of his face, just like that. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and feather it out to about, say something around here. Okay, 31-ish. Right, I'm going to invert that. Right here, I inverted it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my gamma and I'm gonna pull it down quite a bit, okay? so. I'm gonna go to somewhere around eight-ish. And if we look at our gamma and this shot, right, or actually everything outside of our character, it is living in this world, right? So like we brought that down quite a bit. Looks kind of fake as of now, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull it up a little bit, not too much. I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here. I'm gonna go ahead and track it forward and backwards by hitting this one button. So that made a pretty big difference, but I'm gonna stay in the same node. It's going to be right here, okay? So look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just grab this and I'm gonna add crazy amount of blur, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm literally gonna just take it to somewhere around 59-ish, 58-ish, something like that. And now if I bring this image up, once again, just look at how the sharp areas are right here, barely even his eyes, and then everything just drops, man. It goes nuts. Like, look at the shoulders, look at the shirt, right? So we started to do that because if I do before, look at the texture and how everything is so sharp, and if I do after, and then look at how nicely everything just like kind of blurs out. And this is a really nice blur technique, even just like around his ears and everything like blurs out, but like then his eyes are still in focus, right? So that is making a pretty big difference. Once again, if we look at our waveform, like how our dude is right here, everything else is dropped. So we're about to do that in this next step. Okay, so let's call this curves. And then this one is going to be relight. Now you guys know back in the day, um, you know, when I did my first video on relight, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but then, uh, you know, there's always a time and place for it. Okay. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to use a directional lighting and I'm going to grab it from this point. This effect is super sluggish, which is just something that I don't appreciate or like about it, but I'm going to use it like this. Okay. So this light is going to come from this direction. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here and now I'm going to get rid of it. 
So nothing really happens when you do that, but now I'm just gonna go in my gain and I'm gonna crank uh, crank it up. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm just focusing on his face and it's kind of doing its job really nicely. All right, so I'm gonna, do I wanna bring it up? I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here and I like what's happening, okay? Like, do I wanna use my gamma and pull it up a little bit and pull my gain down? I'm liking what I'm seeing here. And now what I'm gonna go, uh, go ahead and do is I'm gonna create a custom shape and we're just gonna basically do something like this, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and soften it. So I'm just gonna go in my softness and I'm gonna soften it until it doesn't feel or look fake. So something like that. And then let's go ahead and just track it. If you're enjoying what you're seeing so far and you wanna take your grading game to the next level, I have two different options for you. One, you can watch my free webinar. We'll take you through all the basic stuff like shot matching, skin tones, gamma shift issues, things like that. You will also get tons of freebies. You can check that out or you can get my masterclass. We have over 300 plus on-demand lessons, weekly competition, 6,000 students in the masterclass and it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So the links to all of that is in the description below. Let's get back to the video. All right, so now we're back to it. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click Command W so we can get rid of the window. And uh, I'm gonna go back to the split mode so we can see what we're working with. And now what I wanna do is just go in my gamma and just add that uh, warmth. Probably do the same thing here. And if I do before and after, it's looking pretty good. I wanna look at the overall saturation in our images. So I'm gonna go to this, I'm gonna look at the saturation, and then I'm gonna go to our image and look at the saturation. So I think the saturation levels are actually not bad. Although I just feel like we have a little bit uh, too much uh, saturation in our overall image, whereas here I feel like it's a little bit more contained and then it's uh, uh, the majority of the saturation is in the mid-tone. So one way to attack that would be to go under sat versus sat and I'll just create a point here somewhere and I'll drop that down to something like this. And if I do before and after, just look at all these very saturated areas. So this is before and this is after, and that just cleans it up a little bit. And I kind of like that. So I want to leave that in. One more thing I want to do. Remember when we created that window and brought everything down, I want to go ahead in my printer lights right here. And I just want to add plus one cyan. Okay. So I'm just going to do that and you'll see what it does. Like it cools off everything around them. So it leaves the skin tones as is. And that's one thing that we're seeing with Oppenheimer. Like everything is kind of on the cooler side, but then the face, has like a really nice warm tones. And we're starting to see that. And once again, if we go here and then we go here, you can start to see like what's really happening. If we feel like it's too much, we can come back. So let's go back to what we had before. I personally feel like this might be actually closer because like, look at this, right? Like look at waveform to waveform. It's kind of uncanny. Like even the oranges and the skin tones is looking really good. And then all the rest of the colors are actually looking pretty good. What do we have to do at this point? Can we add a little bit more warmth in, into his skin tone? I personally think that it looks pretty good. Let's not forget that our dude is just a little roughed up compared to what's happening with Oppenheimer. So this is where we add right now. I personally feel like we can get into our curves and have a little bit more fun and, and see like what else can we get out of it? Okay, so I'm gonna put my scopes right here. I'm gonna go under my curve and I'm actually really even liking how everything is sitting right here to right there. And you can even see it in the scopes. It's like pretty good, like in the same area where it should be. Look at this, this, our highlights did that highlights. Okay, so it's, it got it pretty close and this is looking pretty good. I'm looking at the black point and just like my curve on the bottom end. And I think it's looking pretty good. We're kind of like aggressive with it, but because the relighting effect is so original, the way it works and like how everything kind of just like lives there, it belongs, that it doesn't come off fake. I feel like overall we have just a tiny bit like red right here. You know where it's coming from? It's coming from the jacket, so I'm not gonna fight it. But what about the rest of the image? The rest of the image is starting to live in this area and we can see it, right? Like on the vector scope. So if I were to take this and if I were to kill it, how everything was sitting right here and where we were to where we are now. And then if I bring this up, everything around our guy is living in this world, right? Like around 384 and then it drops and same thing with ours, right? Like, I mean, it, it we brought everything down uh, by creating the window because everything was like way up there, right? So we brought it down and then we put focus on our guy and um, 
and, and the relighting effect just did such a natural job to kind of have the light sit under the eye sockets and things like that bring out the eye in a very realistic way all right guys so let's check it out right like so let's put them uh, side by side so we started with our overall exposure dropped about a stop then went and created our curve and then just a very light touches with the look to get everything in the ballpark window did everything right like i mean that just like really made it believable and then went and did some relighting and that's a very very cool effect when when used right and done right another thing that we saw is like how texture goes such a long way so by creating such a cool texture we were able to create something very nice like i mean just look at that right like where we are like what we ended up creating even if i switch it and we look at it like here this is pretty cool what we ended up creating and if i go in my look right here let's just say if i kind of want to like warm it up in my primaries what i can do is in my gamma just add a little bit more yellow okay so i'm going to subtract some blue just a tiny bit and I'm going to add some red and it's pretty nuanced, but I'm just doing it off of like what I'm looking at right now. So I'm going to dial back on the red a little bit. This to me is looking pretty good. So if we go before and after, this is like looking pretty good. I feel like there is just a hint more green. So I can just go in my gain and just add a little bit of green. OK, just a tiny bit of green. Personally, I'm pretty happy with it. You guys let me know what you think. There you have it, guys. So Oppenheimer look created from scratch in Resolve without using any third party plugins or LUTs. I had so much fun putting this one together. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of it, too. If you have any content suggestions, drop it down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.